Good evening. A yachty has jumped into the ocean, risking his own life to cut free a whale trapped in a shark line off Stratty. But soon after, a second whale was caught in a fishing net. Let's go live now to Renee Henry, who's been following the rescue operations. And Renee, two very different rescues. Indeed they were, Georgie. The second rescue was about a two-hour operation this afternoon and that was for a whale caught in spanner crab gear east of Jump and Pinbar. These pictures just in from SeaWorld show the whale already tired. It was continually holding its tail below the water as if it had an anchor attached. Experts threw lines in desperately trying to remove whatever it was holding it down. You can see it splashing from time to time but it was clearly struggling. Divers had to get into the water and use knives to cut the remainder of the lines free. You can see the huge damage done to the animal's tail. SeaWorld believes the fishing gear had been attached for some time, but it's understood it was the fishermen who deployed the crab net who notified authorities the whale's tail was very sore, but they do believe it will recover and be able to continue on its southerly migration. Now, that rescue was after another rescue that happened early this morning, and that one wasn't by SeaWorld. It was by a 67-year-old yachty who seems to think anyone else would have done the same. Just off Point Lookout, a pod of whales put on a tail-slapping show not far from the drum lines where another was rescued. It had ropes around its head and a great big chain around its tail and it was having great difficulty here keeping its little breathing hole above the surface. On a brief sailing getaway from Bow Desert, Peter and Joanna Brown spotted the struggling 12 metre long humpback about 6am. They called authorities but say there was no time to wait. He kept fighting, he looked exhausted. 67 year old Peter first tried to cut away ropes from his dinghy before diving in, armed with a snorkel and bread knife to cut away the rest. The animal then wriggled free from the chain. As the creature was completely powerless and I think it realised I was there to help it. It was a happy ending this morning however certainly you know to jump in the water with these animals is a very very dangerous situation um, and I think that, that person put his life at risk. The mammal became trapped even though the drum line was fitted with a sonic alarm known as a pinger and designed to keep whales away. I sort of liken it to uh, the teenage year where uh, years of humans where the a bit more gamer. Peter's sailed for 13 years. He's been around the world and never had to do anything like this. Still, he says he'd do it again in a heartbeat. It was most exciting, one of my most exciting mornings of my life, actually. <laughs> and one he'll never forget. Now, SeaWorld is confident those sensors are doing their job in keeping whales away from nets and drum lines. So far, entrapments are down on previous years, but clearly two very lucky escapes today. Thank you, Renee Henry. A Queensland couple has opened a warehouse selling only Australian grocery products. Mark Sulo reports they're fighting big supermarkets and imported products. Some of Australia's top businesses shouted from the rooftops, buy Australian. Now Brisbane's Howard and Katie Hooker are tackling the supermarket's increasing overseas slant with their only Australian grocery store. What we're doing is making it easy for people, so no, I don't think there's a risk. Products are rated. Four A's means Australian owned and made from Aussie ingredients to FA for foreign owned. And the hookers claim Aussie shouldn't always be more expensive. People think it's more expensive, but it's not. And also retailers playing on that fact that it's Australian made and putting the price up because it's Australian made. There's no doubt about it being busy today, but can that level of enthusiasm and support be maintained long term? That's the big dollar question. Yes, but I suppose you're paying for quality. Federal poly Bob Catter opened the inaugural venture claiming a quarter of a million businesses are threatened by Coles and Woolworths market domination. He's introducing a bill demanding cigarette type danger warnings about contamination in overseas products. We will get this. Sooner or later, the Australian public will rise up in outrage. The bill is unlikely to get major party support. Mark Sulo. 10 News.